So in the next part of our budget rebuild we are going to be assembling the head and doing some work on it as you might need to do that on yours too. Uh, first thing is well you might need to check your head for straightness. If you for example pulled off the head because of a head gasket issue then it is likely that your head might be warped. Especially if it was a bigger issue where you had a lot of smoke out of the exhaust, etc. In my case, I didn't have any issues and the head was straight. And if it is not on yours, uh, you can take it to a machine shop and get it resurfaced. That's pretty much it because you cannot really do it on your own uh, if the head is warped, although I wouldn't rather I wouldn't recommend it because there are methods but they aren't really that great to do yeah and watch out how much they pull from the head so how much they are shaving it by because that obviously influences the compression ratio so you might need a thicker head gasket if you are uh, shaving off more uh, than like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters as I said, in my case, I didn't do anything of that because my head is still straight. So I checked it with a straight edge, straight edge, and there wasn't passing any light, light through, and I wasn't able to see any major warping. Continuing with this, we are not assembling the head yet. We pulled everything out. So we pulled out the valves, we pulled out the valve strings, etc. We pulled out the old valve stem seals, which is important for the next step we are doing. Also, you wanna always replace those if you have the chance to, because those are the most easily accessible when the head is outside of the car. These can be a bit of a pain to get off. I use a set of pliers, which works fine if you have a tool like a, uh, a special uh, valve stem seal puller that's ideal but uh, you also can do it with a bit of persuasion with a set of long pliers otherwise yeah get them out and you want to obviously check the head for or the valves for any play or if the seals are still good and not have any pitting in them um, that's what I explained in the first video of this project where we check the head for wear. In this we are just assembling it and also we are relapping the valves. So relapping the valves and into the valve seats which is important to make sure the valves seal 100%. While there are many techniques how to do it, some use a wooden stick with some suction cups on it. I, in my case, uh, this didn't really work that well, or rather on these valves that have a dish in the middle, uh, that suction cup doesn't really stick. So I used the method where you put a vacuum hose on the other end of the valve, so from the bottom, and then use a um, battery drill to, a battery power drill to uh, spin the valve and grind in the valve seats with some valve grinding compound. You wanna do this with two different steps. First of all, you are going to use some coarse grit uh, valve grinding compound uh, to grind in the valve seats. And after that, you wanna use some finer grit. Usually in those packs or those cans, you get both grits included and you are going to do about three to four passes with each grid. So putting it on the valve and lapping it until the uh, all the compound is gone or rather until there is no none in there anymore and then reapply compound or rather scrape off the excess that was pushed to the sides and put it back on the seat or back on the uh, seating surface and grind again. I, as I said, I'll do this three to four, maybe five times, depending on how the seats look. If they are a bit more worn, uh, you might need to do it more often. Or if they have a lot of pitting, you should be able to get rid of that with doing more passes of that. Just make sure that your valve shaft is looped up so it does turn freely in the valve guide. And also make sure no excess valve grinding compound is entering the valve guide because that can uh, damage the valve guide quite heavily and cause extended wear of the valve which you don't want. 
if we have done both passes if you want to you can do a another test with brake cleaner and uh, the air pressure such we have done in the first part and check how uh, the valves are sealing but usually they are pretty good you just have to make sure to clean everything like every bit of grinding compound off of the valve seats and the valves so that they are sealing properly otherwise you will obviously get skewed results finishing that we are just putting the head back together now uh, as i said i use a very very cheap tool to install the valve springs and retainers and that works fine for me i've never had any problems with that on the 20 valve heads such as the 4ag 20 valve and 1at it will be a bit tight uh, around the valves because there's really not a lot of room and the valve springs are kind of shrouded so it's kind of a pain to get everything in but it works uh, for example on a k20 where the head is relatively open that's a lot easier to get everything in but uh, yeah it just takes a bit longer my tip is to get the keepers in put a bit of grease on them so that they basically stick to the valve shaft and they if you let go of the retainer then they stick to the valve shaft and don't move upwards with the retainer and uh, just fling anywhere uh, that is not something you want to happen especially if you cannot get a hold of a spare keeper such as for the 4ag 20 valve where i live i would have to wait a few weeks to get a new keeper or a new set of keepers so it was very important for me to not lose any stuff from the head okay after assembling the valves valve springs and keepers it is important to measure to measure valve clearance or valve lash in my case there wasn't anything changed so i did not recut the um, valve seats or i did not install new valve seats or i did not install new valves so my valve lash was still within spec i checked everything though uh, so that i was 100 percent sure that it, there was but if you for example had an, uh, had any issues with your head and had for example a new valve seat inserted and ha that had to be recut you obviously have to re relash those valves or those uh, cylinders there are multiple ways you can do that for example if your lash is smaller then you can grind down the lash caps if you have any so if you have lash caps you can grind them down um, it's also possible if you don't have lash caps but normal shims which aren't easily ground down and need to be very flat you can also shorten or get the valves shortened a bit this needs to be done by a machine shop as it needs to be pretty precise uh, but that's the other option that you can go for the easiest way to to, turn, to determine how much you need is starting an excel sheet or anything where you have listed everything and uh, just write down what you need and what you already have most of the time you can switch around a few shims if you have for example redone the whole head and you only need to buy a few of them new usually most of these shims even if your parts for the engine are discontinued for example for the 4AGE are still available at the dealer or at least in the aftermarket and can maybe be uh, exchanged from other engines um, or can be reprodu reproduced so that's not that big of a deal but you need to make sure that your valve lash is within spec otherwise you may get a ticking sound or um, if for example your valve lash is too tight and the valves get longer as they get hotter your valve lash goes to zero or uh, even like minus in theory then your valve wouldn't close all the way so your car might only run on three cylinders when cold or when hot and obviously you do not want that on a freshly built engine that can also happen if a valve is for example hammering itself into the valve seat and therefore the clearance tightens up or goes to zero or even under zero and the engine may run 
uh, on three cylinders because of that uh, issue when it's cold or when it's hot also that depends on the expansion of different components after that adjustment it's pretty much done so we can put everything back together i will not show how i put the head on the car etc i will just show you how to break in the engine correctly because there are a few important steps that a lot of people are not really following and um, there are a few misconceptions about that as well that i just want to tell you because this is one of the most important steps in rebuilding an engine um, as if this is not done properly then you might not get good compression results or, or a good well broken in engine.